the way we are. My film, The Stockroom, deals with universal themes of fear and confidence and love and taking a chance. I mean, that, that's something that everybody experiences. It's a big deal for me today. And I just want to celebrate it with somebody that I care about. Lily, I want to show you that I've changed. I got to go. It's a big deal to me that the main three characters in the stockroom are Puerto Rican. If you're a writer who is Puerto Rican or, or Latino from another Latino country, and you're, you, you're an excellent writer, you should be given the opportunity, just like anyone else, to be a writer or a producer or a director. The bigger companies, all they have to do is say, yeah, we're gonna tell that story. You know, I don't wanna see you know, Afro-Latinos uh, as the maid anymore. I don't want to see them as the babysitter anymore, you know, or, or as the sidekick. Now, here's the thing. We can't rely on that stuff. If I can't get into those doors, I understand the reality. But like I say to some people, there are so many tools, so many ways in which you can get into doors today that there's really no excuse. If we can't get into that door right now, that's fine. Don't let your career end because you can't get there. During the times that it was quiet, I started writing, whether it was a short story, sketches, short films, things like that. And during that time, I realized that I was a pretty good writer. And I said, well, maybe, just maybe, I'm not just an actor. So probably for like a year or two, I sort of trained myself to edit. It empowered me. I felt that finally I was independent. So I decided to direct my first uh, short film, La Operación, the 15-minute narrative about the sterilization of Puerto Rican women during the mid-40s. Es un método en lo que se practica una técnica de operación muy sencilla que detiene a su cuerpo de recrear hijos. When I was going to start doing the research for La Operación, Centro was really, really helpful. They immediately gave me the documentary La Operación to watch. They gave me some, some, uh, some literature. And I sat there for the entire week just watching and reading stuff. And I finally was able to come up with the story that I wanted to tell. I'm planning on doing the feature length version of that film. But I actually want to film that in Puerto Rico. The idea is that I can employ Puerto Rican actors, Puerto Rican crew members from the island to bring money back to the island versus doing it here. In 1998, I worked in a stock room for a clothing store. The majority of the people that worked in the stock room were all Latino and African American. I love just the fun that I had. I love the people that I worked with. Are we gonna beat the tenure mark together? Yeah! Yeah, yeah well, let me hear you, let me hear you! Yeah! yeah. So April Hernandez Castillo has been a friend of mine for a while. April has been in a lot of stuff. She was in the movie Freedom Riders, Dexter. She's recently on this new show, Feed the Beast. I always knew that I wanted her to play the character that she does, the role of Tina. She's the, the girl that's uh, the new girl. In our story, uh, Joseph, it's technically his last day. He's supposed to get promoted to assistant manager, and it's her first day. So he's a little bit more on the quieter, shyer side, and she's a little bit more tougher, like straight to the point, no filter. So they kind of complement each other pretty well. Do you want to dance? Uh, no, I don't, I don't dance. What? Come on! No. Come on. Come on. No. I don't know. I'm very proud of my Puerto Rican community and people and artists and everybody who's always doing something to move us forward. Economic development is important to the community because I can help the immediate issues. If I'm going to shoot something in the community of East Harlem, I want to incorporate something from the neighborhood. All the clothing that we used in the stockroom, we literally donated it to an organization in East Harlem. And what they do is when they sell this clothing, they use that money so that they can produce more programming in the community. My education in theater has helped me to be a better speaker, to communicate with people, to be able to express my ideas.
I did this workshop, it was a free workshop for whoever wanted to come and close to 35 people showed up to this free workshop. I started to find that I was a, a pretty good teacher. I never thought that I wanted to be a teacher, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed helping people. You know, but if this is important to any one of us, then we gotta work hard for it. Gotta work hard, you've gotta be consistent because in the end this is for you, right? It doesn't matter if we become big stars, if we make millions of dollars doing this, if you're happy by doing what you're doing, if it makes you feel good, if you only do it as a hobby because it brings joy to your life, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Some of my Puerto Rican students that come to the class are actors that have, have worked. Some of them are currently working. Some of them are just starting out. Some of them are accountants or they're chefs. And so some of them come to me because they've always wanted to be an actor and they want to see if this is something they should pursue. And one thing about my class is that it's very, it's a very encouraging, positive environment. So starting with Ari, and then we're gonna go clockwise, I want you to share with the class what is amazing about you. And this is the thing that you believe. And maybe you don't fully believe it, but maybe we could think about that today. What, what's amazing about you, and we'll go down the line. There's been a lot of situations where people never spoke up for themselves. You know, uh, even my own family members may have been taken advantage of and have been too shy, didn't want to cause any conflicts, you know, so never really had a voice per se. If I can help and shape Latino voices for the future, if they just get a sense of what their voice is and then are able to continue developing it even after my class, that's also very important to me. When I meet fellow Puerto Ricans, you know, in the neighborhood or back on the island, Everybody is really, really proud of the stuff that I've done. If I've contributed to anything when it comes to, you know, folks on the island and, and Puerto Ricans here in the U.S. is the inspiration on a spiritual level and just on the level of knowing that you can do it. You can really get things accomplished. It's really just being committed. Listen, give me a chance to show you that I can do this. We have things that we want to do, dreams that we want to do, but we're too afraid to take the first step to make it happen. And that can happen to anybody. I'm aware of who I am. I am very grateful for those that came before me and I had to kick some of those doors a little bit open so I could slip through that crack. And I'm, I'm very grateful. And I'm gonna continue working my butt off, you know, to tell my stories as best as I can.